you only have to look at any internet forum related to the outdoors to know that talking about gear and equipment comes into people's enjoyment of the outdoors these days a lot. Uh, looking at my own kit there's generally two types of items I carry there's something like this head torch is Alp kit head torch that I carry uh, knowing it's reliable and it'll work but I'm likely to use it and then there's things like this this uh, palm 20 meter throw line I use this when canoeing or kayaking it normally is attached to me or attached to the boat where I can access it easily and it's for helping to rescue other people in the party people I'm out kayaking or boating with uh, this one I intend to use and I'm quite happy to use it this one I know how to use and I know the limitations of it but I really hope that we don't get in the situation where we have to use it we were given a six-person self-inflating survival raft by one of our neighbors a few months ago and we decided we were going to set it off and uh, do, go, do a short video of uh, what's in the ice, what's in the raft how they inflate and that kind of thing as we looked into it it's 20 years out of date we have no idea what state the raft is in or the contents so we decided to set it off in the woodland at one of our sites because it's far away from any water sources that we could possibly contaminate. No one's going to mistake it for a real uh, emergency, no one's going to think we're in distress if we set it off on the beach or something like that and we can film it and it's not going to uh, cause any problems to anyone else. These kind of rafts are normally attached to the back of a small yacht or powered vessel. Uh, they're in a fiberglass case about that kind of size and they've got a lanyard coming out of them that you attach to a secure point on the deck of the boat. If you need to inflate the raft it's normally you throw it overboard or kick it overboard but it pulls on the lanyard that sets off a mechanism which inflates the raft with CO2. So in the raft once you get into it you should find a small bag of survival items that uh, will be crucial to the next stage of your survival um, and the raft should stay inflated so that's what we've done we've set off the raft and this is the video of what happened Got off. Strobe light. No idea how I'm going to get this home. So now all the CO2 has gone off and it's inflated up to quite a decent pressure. I'm going to try and get inside and 
I should might, might we might pull it off the uh, the casing first, make sure it's not going to puncture. So CO2 canister here, and you can see why these life rafts have a certain safe lifetime to use them because they start to degrade, things peel away. That corrosion on there, and this has been sat on the back of a yacht, but it's never been used. You can see the ice particles start to form there. So all of the gas that was in this CO2 canister is now making up the raft. And let's see what we've got inside. So we've got a couple of paddles attached by a cord. Everything in here is attached. So I suppose that when it deploys, it means all the life-saving items are in there and can be easily found. What else have we got here? Oh, a sea anchor. Yeah, these, a sea anchor. These can be, uh, you deploy this out behind you and it uh, stops you drifting too much, at least it keeps you drifting in a straight line. What else have we got? Well, time to get in, I think. Yeah, something's gone off. The valve. We're depressurizing. Got some paddles. They don't look like much, but it's better than using your hands, particularly dangerous waters where sharks might be an issue. We have a guide to using flares, Morse code, Department of Trade rescue signal table. And I'll stand what we've got down here. So lots of attachment points. We have a knife, or a small safety knife, with a wooden handle. No points on it because the last thing you want in here is to stab the side of the thing that's just saved your life. There are these inflatable arches here. What else have we got? We've got this bag of survival items here that we'll have a look through that in a moment. <coughs> this is uh, for up to six persons. I think it's six people who'd have to get on very well with each other. Or at least smaller than me. Small waterproof bag. Again, attached by a lanyard. A strobe. But I suspect that should have activated already, and it hasn't. And then... What is this? So... Yeah. Access to the outside. Something easy to grab, something that will float and you can throw it to somebody. In fact, I'm fairly certain that is one of those rubber ring things that you have you used to have in PE lessons at school. And all of these signs here, so you can reinflate using a hand pump. So let's see if we can find one of those things like this. But first, let's have a look at this survival kit and what's inside. So this is the small pouch of survival items that came in the case. This was in the raft. This wasn't attached to anything, actually, which is interesting. So what have we got here? 
hand pump or desalination pump? A torch, okay. Very interestingly packed. Does it work? No, of course it doesn't. So put that to one side. And try and keep all these items. Use them at a future date, maybe. A baling bucket. So, instructions there on how to bale this. So, when you've deployed the raft and you, you've just flipped it the right way up again, you can get the water out and get it more stable and get yourself dry space inside. Batteries for the torch. Expired in. How do these expire? They don't have an expiry date on them, that probably gives you a clue to how old they are. What have we got here? Puncture repair kit, vulcanising rubber solution. I suppose that's very important when the thing you're sort of relying on is filled with air. More batteries. And these are the things we weren't sure about the consistency of, so we um, wanted to make sure that we did this far away from any water courses where we wouldn't contaminate anything. I think these are rubber bungs, so if you can repair any uh, problems in the raft, you can, you've got a hole in the raft, you can put the bung into it and then wrap cord around, make an airtight seal. Woohoo! Out of date flares. Yeah, we're going to put those over on one side and get those disposed of. And an air pump, English, Seamaster D pack. So, this is the pump, I think. It looks like it's had a tough life in there. It's been packed down. I'm not sure how much use it's going to be. That's the bung to reinflate the side of the raft. So I suppose it would work. Yeah, there is air coming out of there. But not sure how well that would work these days. So all in all, there's not a great deal in there. Apart from the flares here, which I've put to one side, just in case there is a problem with them. You can never be too sure with out-of-date pyrotechnics. There's not a great deal in here. Puncture repair kit and a pump for the raft. Something to bail the raft out. Something to repair the raft if you've got big holes in it. Some batteries. And this torch. So on the raft itself there was a small knife, some more cord, a floating ring. So if you are not on the raft, if you're in the sea, you can throw a line to somebody or you can uh, retrieve the raft. Um, there's a strobe on the top and then the inside which doesn't work and that's about it. Uh, there's not a great deal else in there. So if you were my neighbour and you had just got into trouble and ditched into the sea in the uh, North Atlantic or in the channel, there's not a lot else here that's going to help you. Um, it, you can maintain the raft and you can be seen immediately if the torch works but apart from that there's not a great deal else here you can do. Oh, no batteries in the torch. Let's see if they work. You can float, you can repair the raft and you can see but you would ideally need a secondary survival kit to go along with this. So water is the main thing I notice is missing from here. Uh, you may already be wearing a survival suit of some kind. Um, Apart from the flares, there's no way of making signal. No, batteries are dead, completely dead. Apart from the flares and the torch, there's no way of signalling with anyone, so a radio, um, waterproof VHF radio would be a very good idea. Other than that, it's down to what else you can grab and what you think will be useful for you, but in a, a ditching situation or when the 
the boat starts to sink, you may not have that time, you may only have a few seconds to kick this overboard and jump. Um, so I know rafts these days ha do carry a bit more equipment, but your survival is your own responsibility at the end of the day. What you do to ensure that survival it comes down to your planning and your preparation. So if you are watching this and you have a boat and you have one of these things strapped to the side of the boat, it might be worth just checking through that contents list again and seeing what you would actually need compared to what's in there. Because I know there are a few cases where people have relied on what's in the survival raft and what's required by the reg current regulations, but they've not really, they've been a bit surprised or pleasantly, unpleasantly surprised when they do ditch into the water and find they've got a torch and a pump and not a great deal else. I must say we've had a lot of fun doing this and filming this today, um, but it does pose two questions. One, how am I going to get it home? Two, what must it be like to be in the middle of the night in a stormy sea and knowing that the only way you're going to get you or yourself or your friends or even your family and the, your next place of safety as this yacht or boat that you're on is sinking is to kick this thing overboard with make sure the rope's still tied to the uh, boat and watching the life raft hopefully inflate knowing you've got to then try and board it either carefully and slowly with your pre-packed survival bag that most sailors carry or you haven't got time for that and you've just got to jump and go so what's that like what does that feel like uh, this is the thing with most survival items, the, and we're talking about the real survival items here, things that have and do save lives, not a multi-purpose knife, axe, fire lighting, whistle tool that's also a compass and charges your iPod. I'm talking about real survival items, things that are designed for that purpose and do save lives. But they are always a bit sobering to see because if they're being used and being used properly, then it means someone's really in trouble, someone's really had a bad day and this is the only way they're going to get home to see their family or get home safe. So as much fun as it has been filming this, it's always a little bit sobering. Uh, it's worth seeing what is in these rafts and what isn't in them um, and what comes with the kits. This is a very basic kit in this raft you would definitely need to take more items with you and have more items ready to go in case uh, there was a sinking. But it has worked. It's uh, 1995 or thereabouts, the age. It's worked well. It's inflated more or less first time. Um, and it's inflated and stayed up. Uh, but you can see there's heavy corrosion on all the metal components. Some of the rubber starting to degrade. I wouldn't, even though this thing to get one of these new is at least a thousand pounds or thereabouts it's not something I would want to skimp on it's not it's something where I would want to spend money it's like a first aid kit you go for the best one you can afford or carry um, but you hope you never have to use it the same with these things so I'm glad that we were able to set it off today and uh, play with it but I do hope that I never have to use one for real and if you do have to use one for real then I wish you all my luck.